Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm Paul Clark. I'm a social prescribing lead for Arch PCN. Arch being Alfred and Ripley, Crite and Ina. Um, and I've been in this role since uh, late 2019. Now, before I start, I was talking to my seven-year-old daughter this morning and I was explaining to her what I'm going to be doing today. Um, and she said, oh, Dad, I'll write your speech. So if you don't mind, I'd just like to start by sharing that. So, my job is to make people, make people's life enjoyable and more easy whether it's over the phone or a home visit. But whenever people need me, whether it's going to the food bank or a coffee morning, I do lots of more things, so if you ever need me, please call me. <laughs> uh, and to be honest, I think she's nailed it. So if you want to spend the next nine and a half minutes checking emails or switching off, uh, feel free. Um, so I've been invited along to tell you uh, about the day in the life of a social prescriber. Um, and the thing that I, I love about being a social prescriber is, social prescribing colleagues in the room will agree, uh, no two days are the same by any means. It's an incredibly varied job. Um, so whilst I'm going to give you a sort of a day in the life, as, as it were, um, I thought I'd better tell you a bit about social prescribing and how it works first. So social prescribing, I'd say, has actually been around for many years, long before sort of 2019 when a lot of the services started. Um, for example, it, uh, before I came to work at Amber Valley CVS in 2019, I was working for a care navigation team which was offering a very similar uh, service to social prescribing. And some of you might remember from years ago uh, the old VSPA service, the Voluntary Sector Single Point of Access, Again, a very similar offer to what social prescribing does. So anyhow, back in 2019, um, the NHS had come to this realisation that GPs were seeing people with issues that couldn't be resolved by a GP working in isolation. So the example I always give is somebody who visits the GP because they've got recurring headaches. Really important to see the GP to make sure there's no underlying medical or, or physical cause for that. Um, but this particular person, when speaking to the GP, identifies that there's lots of issues, lots of things happening in their life, um, and that's where the headaches are coming from. So it's a, a lot of stress and anxiety that's causing this. Now the GP can, can describe and prescribe antidepressants for that, they can signpost to the, the IAPT counselling services, but what they can't do in the few minutes that they've been allocated to each appointment is get involved in that person's life and plan with them a way to make things better. Uh, so the root cause of that illness is not being treated. So that's where we come in. Uh, social prescribers, we're there to give people time. Uh, a very important thing that we're told. Our most important function is to help people work out what matters most to them. Regardless of how or why somebody is, is referred to us, um, we always go in to work with somebody on that premise, what matters most to that individual. And once we've done that, we then identify and support people to access services that can help. Now, as I mentioned, I work at Amber Valley CVS, so although I'm carrying out an NHS function, uh, I'm actually based in the voluntary sector, uh, and I consider myself really lucky to be uh, based that way. Um, We've got hundreds of member organisations that are offering support and services in the community. So it's very rare these days that I come across an issue that somebody's having where I struggle to find the right service to get them involved with. Even if I do, there is a way around that, which I'll go on to uh, talk about in a minute. Now, I think there's still a lot of misconception generally about social prescribing. I think there's, there's still a lot of people who, who don't know what a social prescriber is. Um, but I think primarily due to headlines that I had a quick look through and printed off yesterday, uh, like this. Uh, so this is the time saying, doctors urge to offer more gardening courses and fewer pills. Uh, we had a, 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 a recent headline uh, due to some funding that's been released. GPs prescribe cycling lessons for the unfit. Uh, and this lovely one from the Mail Online, 
NHS drive towards prescribing patients, gardening and cookery courses is based on little evidence. Uh, and does go on to say, social prescribing involves referring patients to any activity from history classes to chess clubs. Um, now, I think people imagine that we're, we're kind of just swanning around these different activities and having a lovely time. Um, and I'm not going to lie, you know, if somebody needs to access a social activity for their, their physical or their mental health, um, then we do, we do take them to do that. Um, and, you know, to be honest, my card making skills, hang on a minute, where did I put that? I think you'll agree, uh, are top notch these days. Um, but social prescribing offers so much more. Uh, many of the people that are referred to as are struggling with social isolation. Um, but we also help people to access support with housing, with debt, with finances, accessing benefits, parenting, employment, care of burnout, drug and alcohol misuse, the criminal justice system, immigration, bereavement, domestic violence, the cost of living, and that list just goes on. So what we do is incredibly wide. Uh, having said that, this is a particular day I've chosen. So my day always generally starts at Amber Valley CBS, uh, with my social prescribing colleagues and my colleagues from our other services. So in the CVS alone we offer uh, befriending services, support with coming home from hospital, uh, help at home, domestic support, uh, support to get into volunteering, support for other charities with funding and development and physical activity support as well. So just speaking to colleagues in the morning is a great opportunity to just keep myself up to date with what's happening out in the community. Now from there, on this particular day, I'm out doing a home visit to someone who's just been referred. We always try to offer a home visit, and we do that in like 99.9% .9 of cases when somebody's referred to us. It's not an absolute necessity, um, but it's incredibly enlightening to go out and spend an hour or two with chatting to somebody in their own house. Uh, now, I'm there for just over an hour at this visit, and we talk about the fact that this lady's just been diagnosed with cancer. She's left work so she can access treatment, and now she's really worried about how am I going to pay the bills. Now, although she's got lots of challenges ahead, she decides that the most important thing to her at this moment is to deal with those issues around the finances. She's had some support with that already, so I arrange a benefit check for her. I give her some details of how to save money at the moment, the shopping at the community pantry or applying to the uh, energy companies um, for support. And then we could complete an application for support with housing costs. So once I've done all that, I leave and I'll visit this lady again when that's all in place. And I'll talk to her more about how she's coping socially and emotionally with all that. And we'll just see if there's any more support we need to put in. After that visit, I'm straight to a, a local coffee group. Um, one of my favourite groups in fact. I've supported quite a few people to access this group so when I go it's a really good chance just to catch up with people that I already know. I'm introducing the lady to the group this morning. She lives really locally, she can walk to the group, um, but she doesn't go because she doesn't really get out of the house because she's so anxious around other people. So I've been to chat with this lady at home quite a few times and I've visited most of the groups in the area so I've got a pretty good feeling that this is going to be the right group for this particular lady. Um, I introduce her to the other people in the group and we all sit there having a chat uh, and incredibly within like half an hour she's laughing and chatting away with uh, people in the group without any need for, uh, for me sitting by her side basically. So I take that opportunity to uh, just look out with somebody else in the group because their benefits have been messed up by DWP. So we fit, sit and call DWP uh, we have a painful 45 minute on hold, as you do, which this person would never have, because of their anxiety, they would never would have sat and waited on the phone for 45 minutes. Uh, but when we get through, we get all that resolved. Uh, and then we go back and join the group. Now again, I'll come along with this lady to this group for the next two, three visits, just to make sure she's fully settled into that. And when she is, we'll have a review and we'll decide, is this kind of meeting her needs socially and for her mental health at the moment, or is there more things we need to introduce her to? Before we leave that particular group, I have a meeting with one of the people who run the building where the group meet. 
Now, someone I've been speaking to is looking to set up a new support group, um, but there's nowhere to hold it. So I facilitate a discussion between those two parties and they agree to hold the new group in their building. <coughs> uh, see, this is something else social prescribers do and I think it's very overlooked uh, a lot of the time. We don't just help people to access services that already exist. Where we or somebody else spots a gap in provision, then we'll work with the community to try and fill that gap in some way. So I'll go from there to an appointment at the job centre I've got with a guy next. Um, now I've worked with this guy for quite a long time. Uh, we're usually working with people for people with around six months. Um, and NHS guidelines say it'll be about six months. Um, but this guy's needs are quite complex, so I've been supporting this guy for about 18 months. Sometimes I won't see him for a month, other times I'll see him a couple of times a week. It really depends what his needs are at the time. So we've just put in a benefits claim for this guy because his financial situation's changed. Um, and because he can't read or write, he can't communicate with the systems that the job centre use in any way at all. So I'm there to discuss how we can support this guy moving forward uh, and stop him receiving sanctions and, and getting in trouble when he doesn't respond to interviews or messages. Um, it's not an ideal solution, but we've come to an agreement that I can kind of be a go-between my things are being put in place um, to pass on messages uh, and attend appointments with him. And after that, I get back to the office just in time to drop into the end of a meeting for Derby and Derbyshire social prescribers. Um, this is a regular meeting where we support each other by discussing uh, common challenges. It's a good chance to get to know colleagues too because, because there's 15 primary care networks in Derby and Derbyshire, that means there's 15 social prescribing services. And we all work in slightly different ways. Uh, some of us are based in GP practices, uh, some in different community buildings, uh, and some are working from home. Um, however, be assured that every single GP practice does have a social pres prescribing service. Um, usually the reception team at a GP should be able to tell you how to contact a social prescriber. Um, but if they don't know, I'm going to drop some, mess uh, some leaflets out on a coffee table just outside the door. Uh, contact me or any other social prescribing colleagues in the room. Hello social prescribing colleagues, uh, there we go. Um, and we'll be able to put you onto the right person. Um, now I work part time, as do the rest of my team, so that meeting pretty much brings me to the end of the day. Um, so I hope that's explained a little bit to you about what social prescribers do. Um, I'm more than happy to talk to anyone anytime about social prescribing, so again, grab my details from these leaflets. Um, if you want to discuss a bit further. No idea how long I've taken, but thank you very much. Okay, thanks.